Hello everyone, I'm Lawrence from Unicorn Reviews and today we're looking at the NVIDIA Asus GTX 970 Strix. So it's the NVIDIA GM204 chip. It has 4GB of GDDR5 running at 7GHz. Core itself runs at 1250 uh, with the boost. It's factory overclocked by Asus. And it has a DCU2 cooler, as it says on there, with three heat pipes. One of them is a 10mm one and uh, two smaller ones as well but it has a modified version of fans compared to the stock DCU2 cooler so now it can actually run fanless all right guys quick look around the box now the whole Asus Strix thing is based around an owl so it's quiet it's also very strong, precise, you know, powerful, everything like that. So to help with that, we get the Digi Plus VRM stuff. So it's digitally controlled VRMs and um, it's a six phase design plus two phases for the memory. On the back of the box, there's more marketing stuff uh, as well as the GPU tweak it's utility. Uh, but you can check out all of that stuff on the ASUS website, which I'll link right below in the description. Like most ASUS cards, it comes in a black box with a golden logo inside a box with a lot of uh, marketing stuff on it. So you can just flip the box open inside, again an ASUS box with gold lettering uh, embossed ASUS um, logos there. So what's in this little box? Actually not an awful lot, there's just an instruction manual and a driver disc, but download the latest drivers off of the AMD website. Packaging is incredible, as always with ASUS you get this really uh, dense soft closed cell foam so your card should be safe no matter where you ship to and then the card also comes in this plastic bag okay so this is already something i really like the card actually slides out through the side whereas most packaging you have to slide it from the back so let's do a quick overview on the card this is the uh, the top side or the bottom side depending on your motherboard orientation uh, as we can see it's the usual dcu cooler with one massive heat pipe on one side and then two smaller ones on the other side uh, we get two fans with red dots that should resemble an owl now keep in mind these fans won't actually spin up until you reach higher temperatures so for most games uh, if you FPS cap them to like 30 or 60 FPS, uh, you, these shouldn't actually spin up and this card will remain completely quiet. The card comes with a very good looking brushed aluminum backplate. It doesn't actually cool anything, it's just there for looks and for when reviewers hold them all the time. So we don't have to worry about many things. On the I.O. side of this 28 centimeter long card, which is also 14 centimeters high, so it's 4 centimeters higher than the usual card, so keep that in mind when you're choosing a case. Um, we find our I.O. So it's the fairly standard I.O. We have a dual link DVI, a single link DVI. Actually, this is the, the dual link one. Uh, we have HDMI and DisplayPort 1.2. On the top of the card, we have our two SLI fingers, which are protected from the box. Uh, so you can do up to three-way SLI. We have our 10 millimeter heat pipe right here. And then a single eight pin connector. So no dual six pin like the reference cards, single eight pin. So Asus does recommend a power supply that can do 38 amps on the 12 volt rail at least, so you should probably check that. Uh, but I think most power supplies over 500 watts should be all right. Overall, the card was almost completely inaudible, except for during some loading screens when sometimes there was quite a bit of electrical noise. Tech specs of our benchmark system are in your screen right now. Keep in mind that for the project cars test, which is a 25 car lap around Spa, with everything set to high, uh, performance can vary quite a lot from build to build. Nvidia cards are pretty much king right now in Project Cars and we were getting 74 FPS. In Far Cry 3 we weren't quite at the top but 64 FPS is still quite acceptable. Assassin's Creed Black Flag is a bit older now but we still get 58.4 uh, FPS. And in Battlefield 3 a whopping 77.2 with everything on high in 1080p. Crisis 3, fairly similar story, it's out there with the best 41 FPS. 3D Mark Fire Strike, not quite the fastest, our, our AMD cards beat it there. By going out at night when it was really freezing, I actually managed to get 18% out of the CPU core extra and 40% out of the memory, so we were running uh, 1500 megahertz on the core and 2000 megahertz on the memory, which is quite unheard of. But actually that wasn't really possible because as we can see right here, temperatures weren't too high anyway. So with this overclock, we do reach the magical 2000 uh, points cap in 
Unigen Heaven Extreme. We also get 2832 points in 3D Mark Firestrike Ultra, but you know, the 290X is still the king of 4K. Time for the conclusion on the ASUS GTX 970 Strix card. I'm going to start off with the goods because there aren't really any bads with this card other than the occasional electrical noise during loading screens when the FPS goes way above 500 and the fact that we can't overclock it quite as much as I'd like to, mostly because it's software restricted, so with a bit of BIOS messing around, you can probably fix all of those. But the card is great value for money. It's perfectly quiet in most cases, because let's face it, how many percents of the time are you actually full-on gaming, uh, hitting uh, you know, the GPU limits? Not very often. So with all that stuff you know, in mind, it's a very good card, it supports up to four screens, so three ways around and a monitoring screen somewhere else, probably on top. Uh, with all that stuff in mind, I'm going to give it a gold award right about there. So yeah, buy this card if you're looking for a GTX 970, that doesn't have to be the best overclocking card ever. And um, thank you all very, very much for watching. Like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, leave a comment, subscribe and share this thing with all your friends so they can also know how awesome the ASUS GTX 970 Strix is.